CLI, Command Line Interface, a way of interacting with a computer using only written commands. If you're someone who doesn't use the terminal regularly, you might think, why should I care about CLIs? They're nerdy and stupid and pressing buttons is way more efficient than writing prompts. But look at my desktop, it has colors and text moving and it looks like I know what I'm doing, but in reality I can't even solve a lead code medium question, but I don't care, I need the funny pipes. See, I've been falling a bit into the Linux rabbit hole lately, and that means that I've spent way more time rising my desktop than I should have. But with all that time spent on it, I've realized something. CLI scripts, they're kinda good. And that's basically what motivated me to make this video. Hopefully by the end of this video I would have showed you some very interesting and fun things that you can do with just a terminal and some spare time. And if you think like I did a month ago where I thought, who would spend so much time coding a CLI program? Hopefully the beauty of some of these CLI scripts will change your mind. Since the beginning of times, programmers have always felt the need to do stupid programs with little to no actual application. Now, pinpointing exactly the first silly program that was ever created can be quite futile, but one thing we know for sure is that one of the oldest quote-unquote funny programs ever created was Fortune in 1979. The goal of Fortune is pretty simple, to be a shitty Fortune cookie. Fortune uses a set of databases that contain pre-written messages and then it randomly selects one to be printed in the terminal. And that's it, that's the whole program. It's the 70s, don't ask too much from it. There are a couple of other options that you can choose from, but there's not much that you can do to actually change the functionality of it. Interestingly enough, if you input the flag dash "-o", the program will only print offensive messages. But apparently in newer releases, this database is not included by default, because the messages were very offensive. And of course, because it is so fucking old, it was made in C. Moving on to the year 1991, Figlet was created. Its purpose? Generating ASCII banners. If you were ever online in the early stages of the internet, you might remember these banners that people used in forums, emails, or in legitimately obtained video games that you definitely paid for. Well, most likely, some of them were done using Figlet or other similar programs. Figlet does come with some useful flags such as dash "-f", which allows you to select a different font, such as mini, script, banner, and other ones, and dash "-c", which centers the text. In the year 1999, programmers had only one question in mind. What does the cow say? But that didn't matter because the ship just wanted to be fucked. Cow say is a program that generates ASCII drawings of cows saying any message you give it. Now this program does not only allow you to display your silly little text as if it was said by a cow. No, that wouldn't be enough. It also allows you to use a cyborg cow, a dead cow, a dragon, a llama, a sheep being fucked, and a fucking stegosaurus with a hat. That's gonna be the best thing ever. Look at him, he's so fancy. He's my new best friend. And of course they also included Tox and Kalth Vader. Very funny. A very common thing that people used to do back in the day was to pipe fortune with Kause. If you don't know, piping means using the output of a program as the input for another one. This means that now your cow can display random quotes every single time you call it. I added this to my terminal and now every time I launch a new one, my stickles just show me a different message. Which is kinda cool. But also, what's bro saying? I don't get it. Nowadays, Kause includes a variety of animals, some cuter than others, but its purpose has pretty much stayed the same since its creation. Have you ever been working on your computer and you see a weird term like SHA-256 and you're like, bro, what the fuck is SHA-256? Well, you can use WTF for that. You can just type WTF is SHA-256 and it will tell you some information about it. Now, this is pretty rudimentary and it's mostly a joke, but if you don't want to Google it, it's pretty fun. How many times has this happened to you? You're doing your normal Unix development stuff, you know, changing directories, clearing the screen, listing the files, clearing the screen, listing the files again because you forgot what you saw two seconds ago, and you also cleaned the screen because you're fucking dumb. You get the idea. Now, instead of typing ls, you type sl. Apparently, this is pretty common, but it has never happened to me. Anyway, the point of this program is that any type you mistype ls, you get a giant train rendering terminal using ASCII characters. And you cannot stop it. It only stops once it goes all the way through. A very funny thing about this program is that in the man page, it mentions sometimes listing directories contents as a bug. And that's hilarious. Now that we've covered some of the other ones, we can get into what is commonly known as rice territory. For those of you who don't know, rising in this context means customizing your Unix system. Now, there are many ways of doing this, and I'm not gonna cover those in this video, so the only thing that you need to know is that showing different terminal scripts is a common practice when showcasing your rice. If you've ever encountered Unix porn, you know what I'm talking about. And no, I'm not talking about that Unix porn, I'm talking about this Unix porn. I know it's easy to get confused. One of the most widely used scripts in rising is NeoFetch. The purpose of NeoFetch is to display your system's information and brag about how good your specs are. The beauty of NeoFetch is that you can customize the look of it however you want. I definitely did not spend 4 hours just trying to make it look like this. By changing the config file, you can change the color palette, the system's information, the ASCII art, hell, you can even put an anime girl if you want. I know you want to do that, don't lie to me. The possibilities are endless. And that's why NeoFetch has been one of the most loved scripts in the Ryzen community. Sadly, a few weeks ago, the author of NeoFetch, Dylan Raps, announced that it has been discontinued. So RIP NeoFetch. There are other alternatives still being developed, so you can check those if you want. It's The Matrix, 
but in your terminal. I don't care that I have to waste valuable space in my 14 inch screen to use this. It looks cool, things are moving down, letters are appearing. I'm gonna go insane, but it doesn't matter because it adds 100 skill points to any programming language of my choice. You can just run this program in its default state and it would look good. But if you want, you have some options to configure such as adding bold letters, changing the delay or changing the colors. All of it, it's simply amazing. Having the matrix showing in your terminal might not actually help you with your programming skills, but you know what can for sure help you with it? The sponsor of today's video, Brilliant. One of the things I struggled the most when learning programming was to think like a programmer. Coding is not just about writing prompts on the screen and hoping it works. I mean, it's mostly that, but also it requires logic, problem solving, and lots of creativity. And Brilliant is very good at teaching you that. By relying on visual and interactive problems, Brilliant helps you understand and internalize a wide variety of concepts in the fields of math, physics, computer science, and more. Brilliant's method breaks down complex topics into small and understandable chunks so you can spend a few minutes learning every day. If you are unsure about the specific area that you want to learn, an interesting starting point is their How Technology Works course. This course covers a wide variety of topics such as how computer memory, GPS and passwords work. Recently, I've been invested in learning a bit beyond programming, so if you think like me, this course might be perfect for you. To try everything Brilliant has to offer for free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org slash molds or check the link in the description. You'll also get 20% off an annual premium subscription. With that being said, thanks to Brilliant for sponsoring today's video. Hey, what Pipes. Remember those old Windows screen savers? Well, pretty much that. It just looks cool. This serves as a reminder that the best things in life don't have to be complicated at all. Just choose your best configuration using one of the many flags that they included and let yourself enjoy the hypnotic beauty of pipes. I mean, if you're gonna spend hours staring at your screen without doing anything productive anyway, you might as well just watch funny pipes moving around. If you're watching this video, there's a high chance that your wallpaper is an anime girl. Don't lie to me. So at some point, you must have thought, man, I wish my weep setup was even more weep. Well, think no more. Put a little growing bonsai on your screen. C bonsai is a small program, written in C of course, that generates a cute ASCII bonsai in your terminal. You can either generate an already existing bonsai or see it growing in real time. This one looks fairly simple, but I bet the algorithm took many hours to be polished this way. Overall, a 10 out of 10 must have program. Kava. Kava? Kava? Kava, I guess. Kava stands for Cross-Platform Audio Visualizer, apparently. And it uses your computer's audio to generate this cool-looking Spectrum Visualizer. On top of a basic C program, Kava also uses shaders to generate the Spectrum Visualizer. So technically, it does not count as a pure CLI tool, I guess? But who cares? It's pretty fucking cool. And it runs inside a terminal, so I'm gonna count it. This goes to show the power of a bit of imagination and some very useful skills. It honestly opened my mind quite a bit when I realized that CLI tools were this powerful. Like, I would have never thought about running a fucking shader inside a terminal. That's crazy. In short, I think CLI scripts are a very fun way of using your creativity for something fun. You know, sometimes you just don't want to mess around with UIs or fucking frontend and shit. You just want to write down a few lines of code and have something fun working. And if you're feeling fancy or anything, you can add some shaders or other interesting technologies into the mix. These programs are often overlooked because of their simplicity, but the complexity of the things you can build is just amazing. So maybe give it a try. It can be your next GitHub project. Or your next not project at all because you're never gonna accomplish anything, you fucking piece of shit. Sorry, it got a bit too personal. If you made it this far, thank you so much for watching. If you want to support what I do, you can always leave a comment, like, subscribe and all those things YouTubers ask people to do for them. The channel has grown a lot in the recent months and I'm hoping we reach 50k soon. I have some fun projects that I'm working on for the next months, so keep in tune if you want to find out more. Also, don't forget to check my other videos. So anyways, thanks for watching.